In this video, I want to talk to you guys about the basic setup on zero accounting. Don't select the on button, then it means that you need to go into the invoice setup screen and re-enter all the data a second time over there. So that little button over there, so it selects all of them, and then you delete all the extra VAT items or all the extra VAT codes so that you'll see that you will only end up with a handful of VAT codes, which makes the processing so much easier. <laughs> Good day, my name is Heinrich Huvia. I've been in the accounting industry since 2008 and over the years I've helped many different um, entrepreneurs to get their businesses started and um, just to get all the basic stuff set up. So in today's talk, as I mentioned, I want to talk to you guys about the basic setup on zero accounting. So let me head down to my computer, then I can show you exactly how it works. <clears throat> so the first thing that you will do is when you get to the page itself, if you go to zero.com forward slash ZA, then you will obviously find the screen over here. So at the top over there, you will find a little button there that says try zero for free. So if you click on that button, it will take you to a screen where you need to complete the little form. So we, so I'm going to complete this form over here and I'm just going to use my details over here. <coughs> um, first name, last name. And I think I'm going to use my Gmail account <coughs> for this one. So that I can take you guys right through the, from the beginning. <coughs> phone number, putting my cell phone number, that's fine. We are based in South Africa. <coughs> and then we are not a robot. <coughs> so then after this, we hit this little button that says confirmation. So once we do that, um, let's quickly see. Let it go through. Okay, I need to read the terms of conditions. So I need to press that little button over there and then we send next confirmation. So after that, it will send an email through to my email address. So I'm just going to find that email quickly and then after that, we will get back to the screen over here. So let me just pop down quickly over here. I'll be back in a minute just to find that email. So once you receive the email from Zero, this is what it's going to look like. So you can say, yes, it's me. Let's get started. <clears throat> so as soon as you open up the email, you'll see that here we need to say that you need to activate the account. And obviously for this one, you're going to have to create a password so that you can then log into your <coughs> Zero account. So we can hit the button to activate account. Then from here is where we can start with the setup of the company itself. So you will see. It will take you to the home screen and you can see it takes us to a thing that says onboarding. So over here is where you're going to start putting all the details about your business. So I'm going to put in my business name. We're going to say SA Accounting Network because that is the channel that we're busy working on at the moment. Industry, we're going to say accountant. You can see over here there's a lot of different things. As soon as you start typing it in, then it obviously it fills in the, before the time what your information is. You can see. Uh, time zone South Africa. So this next little button, if you remember in South Africa by default, when you register a company, all most companies financially enters the 28th of February. So this is obviously an overseas system and that's the reason why they by the default put in the 31st of December. So we're going to change this to the 28th of February. So we can just get to the right year end. And then you see over here, do you have employees, yes or no? We're just going to say yes, and then after that, we're going to start our trial. So that is the first step. Once you register for zero hour to go get past your first step, <clears throat> then after this, it will take you to the screen like a dashboard. <clears throat> so before you start fiddling around with invoices and stuff, it's really important that you need to get your logo on here. Um, you need to get your addresses and contact numbers and all that type of stuff set up first before you can start with the invoicing of that company. So what you're going to do is when you get to the screen, you draw, pop down there quickly and then you see there's a little button that says settings. So if you go to the settings button, this is where you will find all the other information that you need to set up. So there we're going to say organization details. Then yes, we're going to put in all the other information. So you see over here, right at the top, there's a little button there that says include some of this information on the online invoices you send. So if you say on or off, so if you don't select the on button, then it means that you need to go into the invoice setup screen and re-enter all the data a second time over there. So it is actually easier when you get to this step, it's just to put the little button to say on, and then it automatically pulls the information through onto your invoices as well. So I'm going to hit that little button that says on, then you can see on the right hand side, it opens up a little checkbox over there to say 
that you want to include it or not. You see, <clears throat> so you can see there we've got the display name, my legal name. We can find the logo. Let me quickly see if I can find a logo for us to use. <clears throat> so if I just go back to my company and we go and find that <clears throat> my logo for my business, and we say there's my logo. We say open, and then you can see over there it then pulls in the logo for my business. <clears throat> Once you've done that, we can see the rest of the information over here. Organization type. So over here we're going to say that our business is a company. Um, you can say organization description. You can say accountant and tax consultant. Because <clears throat> that is what we do. You can see the address. We're going to put in our address here. Bishop, Western Cape. Oh, where did it go to now? <clears throat> so we say always oh, Western Cape. There we go. <clears throat> and then you can see this little button over here, physical address, whether it's the same as the postal address, you can always tick that little box if it is the same, otherwise you need to put in a separate one. Then here by the country, you need to choose South Africa. You can see there's a lot of different countries that you can choose from because we need to get the dining code so we're going to say mm, there's South Africa where's it now 27 <clears throat> then 82559 my email address again I'm just going to use my gmail account and then we're going to accept the terms of conditions and then we can hit the save button so before I hit save you can see on the right hand side there's these little things that says include. So this is what you can let by default. It includes it onto your invoices as well. So I'm just going to hit some of the buttons of the over here because I think it just makes your invoices look more complete. You see, so you can put your address in over there, possibly maybe a contact number and maybe an email address. That is what we're going to put in. You can obviously put in your website address as well. And then we hit the save button. So that is the first step of doing the basic setup of your company. You'll see that the rest of the information for the basic setup is if you go back to organization setup just by clicking on that little blue link then you can run through the rest of the stuff so this screen over here you can set up different users so you can have more than one user on your zero account then you can add other users over here <clears throat> so at the moment we're just going to keep it like that mm, come on quickly get back to the settings screen mm, currencies if you work with multiple currencies you'll put it over there connected app so this is also quite cool so if you work with different things and there's normally like 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 payment systems like um paypal and those type of things is where you would sit and mm, set it up on this screen over here so we can see if our internet is fast enough <clears throat> so this is where you can um, connect some of your apps to zero itself let's quickly go here subscription and billing invoice settings so this is also quite important over there um, let's quickly have a look over there on the invoice, invoice settings, what it's got there. So this is quite interesting. You see by default, it's got these themes of, of what your invoices are going to look like. So you can go and add a branding theme over here to say that you want your invoices to look different. And you can say over here, you can actually do the selections of what you want included or excluded on the invoices itself. So that is something that if you do have a bit of time, that you can sit and fiddle around a bit over there. I'm not going to worry too much about that as I will be doing a separate video on the invoicing. There's the payment services. You can see there's your email settings. So this is also quite interesting. So you can see you've got um, templates that you can use over here. So if you want, you can go edit these templates over here. So what it does, let's say for instance on the side invoice, if I choose this one that says basic, and you can see over here is what it looks like by default. So when I'm send an email out an invoice out to my clients this is the description that you can have so you can possibly go and change something over here you can put in your name so you can say oh, so when you do send out invoices then that information appears by default so i'm just going to hit save over there <clears throat> so that is where you would do some of the basic setup regarding your email setup so i think what we discussed so far as the organization setup, we talked about the users, currencies, connected apps, subscription and billing, invoice settings, payment services. This is also quite nice, as here is the place actually where you would connect your PayPal and, and all those type of um, 
um, payment systems onto Xero itself. And then the other thing that I want to show you guys, which is really, really important as well. Um, I don't know why they didn't put it onto this screen over here, but here's a little thing that says looking for advanced settings, because this is quite important as well, especially before you start to make sure that you've got all your tax settings right and that you've got your accounts right. So you see here's the thing for fixed assets. So if you do want to start working with fixed asset registers right from the beginning, so if you import data from another accounting package, you would do it over there. And you can see here's your financial settings. So this is also quite important that you must complete this screen over here before you actually start working on Sage. And you can see here they start talking about a little bit of tax. So it's important, remember that you get two different types of tax systems. So if you look at VAT, you can work on a cash basis. In South Africa, it's only sole proprietors who is allowed to work as a cash basis. All other companies must always work on their accrual basis. When it comes to VAT, you would put in the VAT number over there, and the VA would say how often you need to charge VAT, you see. Um, what we're going to do, you can see the tax defaults that you can set up over there to say that by default all the invoices will either be including VAT, excluding, including VAT or otherwise no tax. So if you are not registered for VAT, then I would select that one that says no tax. Otherwise, for every single invoice, every single transaction, you're always going to have that little thing with VAT that you have to sit and fiddle around with. You can see over there also, we're going to say no VAT. So then we're just going to hit save. And then what I want to do as well, that I want to show you guys, which is also really important under this screen over here, is if you do work with VAT, is to look at this screen over here where they talk about tax rates. So if you go to this screen, you'll see that they give you a lot of different tax rates on zero. You can see there's a long list. So the problem is, is every time that you start working on a transaction, by default, it's going to give you this long list of transactions or different VAT codes that you have to sit and scroll through to select which one is the one that you actually want to use. So you can see that if you look at the list, you can see there's a lot of weird ones. There's like the old 14% before we change over to the 15%, then you've got all your standard ones. So what I would suggest by default is you click that little button over there, so it selects all of them, and then you delete all the extra VAT items or all the extra VAT codes so that you'll see that you will only end up with a handful of VAT codes, which makes the processing so much easier. You can see all the other ones is obviously just locked by default. So you can see you've got your standard rated purchases, standard rated capital goods, standard rated sales, and obviously all the other ones are, are zero. So just remember that if you're not registered for VAT, then most of the time you will just work with the no VAT option over there. So I think that's also quite important. And then um, let's quickly see <clears throat> what is the other thing. There was something else that I wanted to show you guys over here. So if you go to conversion balances, so if you decide to go from one accounting system over to another accounting system, this screen over here is where you're going to put in all the opening balances from that accounting system. <clears throat> so you can start adding lines over here to say which accounts balances it is that you want to bring in. And then you can see over here as well, <clears throat> they give in these little nice tutorials over there to say that if you want to look at Lazy Prince's accounts receivable, um, you can see over there it says enter the outstanding um, uh, invoices on this date. So it's really important that screen by screen you need to go through this, these little notes over here to make sure that you start with getting the bank balances right first, then look at your outstanding invoices and then your outstanding supply invoices and any other balances then after that you would confirm and once you've got your opening balances in zero then you are good to go and um, yeah so um, so I think as far as the basic setup goes on zero accounting, I've showed you guys a lot of things that you can do here. And then on the next video, I'm going to talk about everything relating to customers and customer invoices. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to my channel as well. And remember, if you are looking perhaps for a new accountant for your business, remember to get in touch with us. My details are in the link below. And you can always contact us on the office WhatsApp number as well. That is 082-559-6454. Thanks for watching.